Hello. Hi students. This is Kedi sir and welcome to Newton Gate Academy. And today I am going to teach you one more thing that is vectors. So this vector is a very important tool for the beginners. And it is a very important tool for the physics also because without vectors you cannot study physics because for the every part for the from one dimension to two dimension to three dimension everywhere you need vectors so to study physics vector studying is necessary and once again i am doing this vector video because every time whenever you try to do algebra of the vectors you feel confusion so if i do a video for you this video you can keep it and whenever you feel confusion you can watch this video day after day and you can clarify your doubts so this is why i am making this video so let's start and one more thing don't forget to like share and subscribe our videos that's all now let's start the vectors now what is a vector first of all the vector is a quantity which has direction vector is a quantity first of all you should know that vector is a quantity later on i'll tell you that vector is quantity as well as an object later on first of all you see vector is a quantity which has a direction and magnitude both so let's try to understand what is vector so here you see this is this arrow is a vector okay now you can see this vectors this is your head of the vector this is called the head of the vector and this is the tail of the vector okay let us name this vector as a b a b vector so it is denoted as a b when it is directed from a to b you can write this arrow but no body is necessary to write this arrow it is understood also that is a is the tail and b is the head of the vector okay so this is the direction next vector has a direction and also magnitude so magnitude means what magnitude means actually this vectors length will be considered as the magnitude this is actually the magnitude of it now how will you represent the magnitude actually vector is represented as a b bar now magnitude if you want to write I mean in standard way don't write the bar that means this is the vector this is the vector fine and the magnitude is written without the bar this is called the magnitude magnitude but problem is that sometimes we just forget to write we are writing we are writing a b as a vector but we forget to write this bar so in that case ab we are actually we are trying to express this as a vector when we wrote it very fast we wrote it we have written ab etc etc that means it ab is a vector ab is not a magnitude but in that case when we write on our hand the specially to say the ab magnitude we used to write ab like this this is the specially given that is a magnitude this is 100% sure that this is the magnitude that means vector bar is a vector and this bar this modular sign that means is the magnitude that means this is a length basically it is a scalar quantity basically so this is the magnitude okay another thing let me tell you this is not belong to your syllabus but let me tell you it is a little bit advanced thing there is another quantity called tensor this is another quantity called tensor now you will say sir what is tensor basically tensor is a quantity which has direction and magnitude but it can have zero to more than one magnitudes when a vector is one magnitude one direction tensor can have more than one direction so that means vector is a 
subset of tensor remember it vector is a this is vector is a subset vector is a subset of tensor when a tensor has more can have more than one direction it can have this as more can have one direction two direction zero direction that means scalar quantity is also a tensor and more than one direction more than two direction multi direction so tensor has can have lot of directions but vector has only one direction and one magnitude so remember vector is a subset of tensor so once again let me revise the vector vector is a quantity which has direction and it has magnitude it is represented as ab where b is the head a is the tail that means it directs from a to b like this so this is a vector now this vector magnitude is represent if you don't write the bar it is a magnitude of ab but when we write on our hand please write the magnitude as specially this way to confirm that 100% confirm that this is a magnitude if you write this might be it's a vector might not be it's a it might be a magnitude but this is confirmed that is a magnitude because sometimes we forget to write this bar we want to write it as a vector but we forget to write the bar so this is the magnitude another thing i want to tell you this vector is a object as i told you that object means what i can take it here i can take the object what do you mean by object let us think this pen is our vector and this pen is like this it is directed like this that means this is our object this pen has a magnitude that is the length of it is the magnitude and the pen has a direction is this direction that is this pen now i can place it anywhere in this world anywhere here here in front of you here 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 so you see this is our vector that means this vector is same as this here like this ab this is our pen means you click and drag this vector here you click and drag this vector here you can click it over here this is a vector and this is a vector ab now in all the cases what you see in all the cases you see the magnitude remains the same and the direction remains the same so wherever you take this pen this pen you take it here 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 or here or here that means you can click and drag this vector anywhere in this universe but whatever will happen uska length is length will remain the same and iska direction will also remain the same this magnitude will remain the same and the direction will remain the same that's all for the starting of the vectors next let's do it what is it you need vector let me tell you what is a unit vector so unit vector is a vector but suppose you have a vector ab think it unit vector actually is denoted as ab cap that means it's a is a vector along ab but the vector this vector has a magnitude of how much one unit unit vector means whose magnitude whose length is one unit so this is our one unit vector that means this from here to here i can denote it as ab cap and how it is written the vector ab divided by the magnitude of the vector is given as the unit vector that's all for the first part of the vector in the next part i'm going to teach you what how to add the vectors how to subtract the vectors so let's do that okay now i'm going to teach you what is addition of vectors when i am have to go through the basic some process of the vectors how to handle vectors so for the handling vectors first of all you have to know how to add two vectors and how to subtract two vectors 
So, first of all, we are going to do addition of vector. So, in place of writing addition of vector, I am writing it as triangle norm. Basically, it is used to add two vectors. Addition of vectors means add two vectors, basically. And even this law is the basic law of all vectors. This is the basic law of all the vectors. And all basic law depends on this triangle law. Addition of vectors also and subtraction of vectors can also be done by this law, triangle law. So here, well, how to add two vectors? Suppose you have a vector here. This is a vector. Take it, let us name this vector as A. This vector as A. Another vector is here. This vector is B. And you can see this direction is here, magnitude is here. Now, if I say what is A plus B vector? So, how can you do? So, let us keep this vector here and click and drag this vector over here. Or keep this vector, take this vector from here and click and drag over here. In such a way that this one's tail will touch this. This one's A touches its tail and or if I bring it over here, this one's tail will touch its tail. So let's do that. See? So click and drag vector, vector, let us take this vector A, click and drag over here. And this vector also click and drag over here. You see how I did it? See, this one's A is here and this one's tail is over here. In this way, then I can say this vector and this vector are in the same direction. And if these two vectors are the two sides of the triangle, but I will state it like as these two vectors are the sides of the two consecutive sides of the triangle. Then the third side, which is opposite in direction to these two, that is now you see why it is in the opposite direction because you see this vector, third vector, if I say C. This one's A is touching this A. So if they are like this, and this vector's tail is touching this tail. If tail and tail matches, A and B matches, then you will say that vector is opposite in direction to the other two vectors. But these two vectors are in the same direction. So this vector plus this vector is equal to this vector. This is the triangle now. So here you see that means this is vector A. This is vector B because this vector and this vector are in the same direction. You see, this is the direction. And if you say this way, then it is going this way. But this is going opposite in this way. So this is here equal to your vector C. So this is what we call the addition of vectors. Now you can say, sir, then you know the addition. Then how can you do subtraction? So let's do subtraction. So what do you do? What do you want? You want that vector A and vector B should be subtracted and let's do A minus B. So let's do C. This is our vector A. And you know as usual this is our vector B. So if I take this vector B this side, if I take this same vector opposite in direction to this and of same length, so this side, if it is this way, then you can say this is our minus b vector. This is vector b. Then of same vector. If I turn it to this side, then what I can say? This vector is negative of it, and you know that this vector, if it is c, and you know as usual, vector c is nothing but actually vector a plus vector b. That I have said to you. That is this vector plus this vector equal to this vector. Now, here you see this vector and this vector goes this way. So, another vector in opposite in direction to this flow is this vector. Let us name this as D. Then, this vector D is nothing but actually vector A plus this vector. This is minus vector. And vector A plus this minus B vector. Therefore, we have nothing but 
This is our vector. Subtraction is done. You see this is vector a minus b. So this is where how we subtraction two two vectors. So this is called subtraction of two vectors. And whereas this is a process how we add kind of vectors. But a subtraction is nothing but another way of expressing a different way of expressing basically of the addition vector of the triangle form. So this is all for adding two vectors or subtracting two vectors. Now, as usual, you know that people, if they are not always happy with two, and physicists also not. So, what they do? Suppose they say that we have n number of vectors, five vectors, six vectors, seven vectors. Then after we add all them, see, for that you have polygon rule. Polygon rule is nothing but adding. more than one vector and two vectors because you know that two vectors are added by, added by triangle rule suppose you have a vector like this C a vector like this A a vector like this B a vector like this C a vector like this D a vector like this E then if I say these all vectors should be added. How can I add these to all vectors? You will use this polygon rule. Nothing. Just click and drag this vector over here. A. For the same dimension, nothing. Copy. Here, this is your B. This is your C. This is your D. And this is your E. You see all of them is in the same direction. How can you know that all of them is the same direction? See, this one's A and this one's A is matching. This one A, A is matching. A, A is matching. A, A is matching. That means they are all going in this direction, these vectors. Now, a vector which is opposite in direction to this, let us make this this vector. Let us make it as this A. Therefore, vector A is nothing but is equal to vector a plus b plus c plus b plus e. This that's all. This is the way how you add more than one vector, more than two vectors. See, this is not a separate rule from the triangle law. This is the same rule. This is just a manipulation. Polygon rule is just a manipulation of the triangle law. See how. See, if you have a, have a line over here, suppose you have a line over here, this joint, joint it like this. So this line, if you join it, this is nothing but A plus B, this vector, because this vector will be equal to this plus this, so this will be A plus B. Now forget about this two. Now you come to this position. Now you see this is a vector and this is a vector. This vector is A plus B and this is your C. So this vector will be what? This vector is opposite in direction to this vector plus this vector. And this vector will be what? A plus B plus C. And once it is done, A plus B plus C. And then this D. So now you see this vector plus this vector will give you the this vector. And this vector is nothing but A plus B plus C. And this is D. So A plus B plus C plus D. You have reached over here. Uh, and you know this is E. So this, this triangle of this plus this gives you this. That is A is equal to A plus B plus C plus B plus E, and this is our last. So it is nothing. This polygon rule is nothing. It is just a triangle only. So in vector, you will see anything there. There will be a lot of different names is there in vector, but all is done by triangle law. There can be many laws, but triangle law is the base of vectors only. Remember it. So let's move to the up to this part. What you see, we have no, we know that this vector plus this vector you have added. We have got this vector. But we don't know this result vectors, how to find the magnitude of it. But suppose I ask you, but what is the 
value of it. But suppose this magnitude I know, this magnitude I know it is will be equal to magnitude of A. This I know it is a magnitude of B. And suppose 3, 4, this is 3 or 4. Then this will be how much? I we don't know. We know only that this vector plus this vector gives you this vector. So from this geometry, we have to find out how to find the magnitude of this vector C. If I know the angle between these two vectors and if I know the length of this vector or length of this vector. So let's go to how to find the magnitude of this vector and how to find the direction of this vector also. If I know the direction of this and this. Let's do that. So in that case, we will do parallelogram law or we can do parallelogram law will be better. We can do another way with the triangle law also. Because we have already discussed how the two vectors are added with the help of the triangle law and the polygon rule. For when if the vectors are more than two vectors, then you have to use the polygon rule and if you have two vectors, you use the triangle law. But we don't know. We know that this vector plus this vector gives us this vector. But we know the direction of it. Suppose we know the vector A directions and vector B's direction is also we know. But we don't know the vector C's direction. We know that these two vectors, this plus this vector gives you this vector. But if I know this vector length and this vector's length, but how can I find this vector's length? And how can I find the direction of this vector? We have to take the help of another law that is called the parallelogram law. And one second and let me tell you that that is also depends on the triangle law. That also depends on the triangle law. So let's see what is parallelogram law. Parallelogram law says that if two vectors, if two vectors are represented by two consecutive sides of a parallelogram then their resulting is given by the diagonal of it. What it is, let me see. See, this is one vector, this is vector A and this is another vector B. This is vector A and this is vector B. And you see, this vector is represented by one of the side of the parallelogram. This vector is represented by another side of the parallelogram. And the angle between these two vectors is also known to me in theta. Next, according to the law, then the result is given by the diagonal of it. The diagonal of it is this. That is this two vectors resulting is given by this diagonal and the length of the diagonal is the magnitude of the resultant. And once again let me tell you, this is no way away from the triangle law. Once again I am showing you how it is. See, if I copy paste this vector, copy paste, when this is click and drag, click and drag, just copy paste it over here. You see this is copy pasting this vector over here. That means this is parallelly moving over here. B that is this is B vector. And let us copy paste this one. So this vector is copy paste over here. This is vector E or vector A. That means you see this our parallelogram is completed. And you can see this is a triangle law also because you see this vector plus this vector gives you this vector. This is our R vector that is the resultant and that is nothing but vector A plus vector B. That's good. So you see that we cannot we go this way or that way. 
that it is all the vectors law depends on nothing but the triangle law. See here this plus this gives you this. This is the result. Now, as I told you that I am going to find out the magnitude of this. Magnitude means the length of it and the direction of it. So you see this R has a direction, R has a magnitude that we will find it out. How will we find it out? Let us see. This vector has a length. This vector has a length. If I don't write this bar, this means the magnitude. I am not writing like this magnitude. Just I am not writing the bar. That means you will understand that is the magnitude of this length. This vector. Same way. This is the vector in. That means if I say this is here A means that is the length of this vector. That is the magnitude of this vector A. And this is our bar vector. So what I do here. Let me draw a perpendicular from here on extend this. That is, this is our angle. As you see, this angle is our theta. So this angle is also theta. Okay. Let us think this height. This thing is x, and this much part is our y. So here you see opposite by hypotenuse, or this opposite is this one 90 degree, and this is our hypotenuse. Because this is theta, so this is perpendicular. If I call it hypotenuse, but this is opposite or perpendicular. That means x by a is equal to sine theta. If I consider this triangle, that means you will see that x is equal to nothing but a sine theta. Remember, this a is not a vector; it is a length of it. That means this length, I am saying, it is a sine theta, and this much length. Same way, you can see this base by hypotenuse. That means y by a is equal to cos theta. So y will be equal to a cos theta. So understood. So x is equal to a sin theta, y is equal to a cos theta. This part. That means this part is nothing but actually of a cos theta. So if I want to find the resultant length of this resultant, what I should apply? I will apply our Pythagoras theorem. Because this is the right angle triangle, you see this is height, this is your base, this is your hypotenuse. So let us name this triangle A, B, let us name this C, this is your D, and this is your D. So in our triangle, you see this is DBE, triangle DBE. In triangle DBE, you see AB square. Is equal to B e square plus D e square. Understood? So B e is what? A sin theta whole square plus D e is what? B plus A cos theta whole square. That means you see, it will be your a square sin square theta plus b plus a cos theta means it will be your b square plus a square cos square theta plus twice a b cos theta. Now you see, if I take this two from this two, if I take a square common, what I have? Sin square theta plus cos square theta. And this b square is here, and this is 2ab cos theta. That means what I get? I get a a square. This is your b square plus 2ab cos theta. That means the resultant formula is proved. See, this is the resultant formula. And r square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. So here I am writing the formula. The full and final formula here is R square is equal to A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. This is the thing we have to prove and we proved it. So now you can find out the length. We got the length of the resultant vector. And this resultant, I have got it. If I know this vector, this vector length, I can find out this vector. If this vector is A, 
this vector is like this b and the angle between these two vectors is your theta as you know then I can get that the vector a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta that is nothing not this theta but if I make this represent in the form of a parallelogram not this theta actually it will come to this theta actually but that is if you have to represent it in the form of a parallelogram so 2ab cos theta so this is if you do it in the form of a parallelogram we have got it this next what do I have to do this is the magnitude I have got it now I have to get the how can I get the direction which direction is present in this way with refer to one of the vector so how can I do that see this let us make this angle is alpha and this vector the resultant vector is making with the vector b an angle alpha then how can this tan alpha is what tan alpha is nothing but you can see opposite by base that the opposite is what a sin theta And base is what? B plus A cos theta. B plus A cos theta. So the direction of the resultant also I got it. So you see that it is successful. So resultant also I got it. Magnitude also is done. If I represent the vector along the direction to consecutive sides of the parallelogram, then the Diagonal will give you the resultant of these two vectors and the resultant of the two vectors, the direction and magnitude both that we have already completed. This is the thing. So, it's, it's all the same. You can do it the triangle tri also the same thing. And if you take this vector and this vector, this resultant is giving this vector. And if I erase this part and this part you copy it over, that means this is a triangle. No? You can see. But you can make this thing in this way also. So this is your vector B, and this is the vector A that I made it. And you see, this is our vector R. That is the resultant of it. That means you see this vector plus this vector is given this vector. So you see this theta actually is not this theta, actually is this theta is this. Because this is a this was a theta, so this will be your theta. So this is why I, I told you that this is not this angle I made it this way. So actually this angle will be the theta. As we take. But if you consider this as a triangle, and if you consider it as a parallel, then in between what is going, that angle will take it as theta. So that's all. So now this is over. The, now I'm going to show you how can a vector be represented with the help of unit vectors three dimensionally so let's do that three dimension vectors so before doing three dimension vectors let us do two dimension vectors and if two dimension vectors are successful then I can be successful with the three dimension also because three dimension a Explaining is difficult here, but if I convince you with you two dimensionally, I can convince you two dimensionally, then I am successful in convincing you the three dimension. Just add the third dimension with it. So let's do start. We'll understand. So I cap, J cap, and K cap. These are the three things you have to know. See. Three dimension. This is the thing. You can take this as a x. This is our y, and you can take this as a z direction. But away from the board. This is our z direction. This. Then this is your x. This is your y. This is normal. So what is i cap? Let me say what is i cap. I cap is a unit vector. Unit vector along x axis. What is J cap? J cap, but it's a unit vector along x axis. Remember, this is your i cap. I mean, this is your one unit over here. When this length is one, and it will be direct you towards the x axis. Same, 
if you have j is a unit vector along y axis if it is along y axis and it will have a direction of one unit when it is this direction and a magnitude one unit same way z direction this is your j cap i cap this is i cap this is j cap and this is your k cap what is k cap this is also vector one unit and it has a magnitude of one unit along z axis that is a unit vector unit vector along z axis so i so any vector in the world three dimensionally not four dimension and talking about or three dimension vector sign talking in this world and we express with the help of i cap j cap and k cap so for that for another thing so these are unit vectors is over now as i told you i will convince you first with the help of two dimension real thing then i will explain you about the third dimension third dimension i have nothing to explain just i will add it so can you see let's do this two dimension thing first of all this is our x axis and this is your y axis and suppose you have a point over k and point a as a coordinate take it a1 comma a2 so comma a1 comma a2 means what when along x axis i have to move how much a units and along y axis i have to move a2 units when this distance is your a1 from here to here this distance is obviously your a1 and from here to here this distance is obviously your a2 now in the vector way if you want to express this position then how do you explain it you will explain it with this direction like this this is a vector and this vector o to a is called position vector on a position of a point with respect to the origin and it has to be expressed in the terms of vector so you see oa is called position vector position vector of point a same way if we have another point b think it it has a coordinate suppose b1 b2 then ob Will be called as a position vector of B, and nothing else. So this simple it is. Now, and if you say, suppose in the anywhere you say that OA vector, OA vector is a vector from O to A, this direction, and that vector is called a position vector. This is a way to try to understand this. What is called a position vector? Now, how to express this position vector in terms of this I J? Let's do that. See. This is a one. A one means which direction? A one is along x direction. And you know I is a vector along x axis of magnitude how much? One unit. And this much vector is how much magnitude? A one. That means if I want to make this part is a vector. This O. Let me just suppose I let us name it as B. See O B. I want to express this as a vector. See O B. I want to express in form of a vector form. So I will write it as nothing but a one into i cap. How it is? Because i is a vector along x axis and whose magnitude is one, and O B is a vector along x axis whose magnitude is a one times of i one. This is why. This OB vector can be expressed as a one times i. Same way, if you want to express BA vector, it's along y axis, and the length of it is how much? A two. And you know J is a unit vector along y axis, so you can easily write this is like a two into J cap. So this is the vector. OB is a vector a one i. 
Bf is a vector A to J. So according to the triangle law, now if I express this as a vector, according to the triangle law, you can say OB plus this vector plus this vector is equal to this vector. That means you can say that vector OB plus vector BA is equal to vector OA. According to the triangle law, you see this vector is equal to this plus this. So that is why the OA vector can be expressed as OB is what? A1 and and what is BA? A to J. So you understand that position vector two dimensionally can be expressed as A1 I plus A to J. That's all. Very easy. Next, if I add, as I told you, I will add three dimension with it. Now if I think it, there is three dimension and this thing is there. It's don't panic, just add the third dimension with it. Suppose I have a three dimension and you think it this point is here like this. And this is A1, A2, A3, and this is the position O. That means the vector OA is equal to A1i plus A2j plus A3k, nothing else. That's all. Clear. So this is how I express a position vector. Same way. Now I can say this is some, how I express a vector. Now I ask you asking you how to find out the length of OA. If I know this thing. So here also you use the simple thing. Pythagoras theorem. This is base is how much A1. Height is how much A2. So this will be what? OA square will be equal to A1 square plus A2 square. That is OA will be nothing but root over A1 square plus A2 square. So this is the magnitude. So you understand? The position vector is expressed as OA is expressed as vector OA is expressed as A1i plus A2j two dimensionally. Then what vector OA three dimensionally it will be A1i cap plus A2j cap plus A3k cap. If I stick with that vector and the length of the vector OA, that's the magnitude we call it, will be equal to root over a1 square plus a2 square. That's all. For the two dimensionally it will be. Same way, if I add three dimensionally on the same thing, then OA will be magnitude will be equal to square root of it. Will be equal to a1 square plus a2 square and plus a3 square. That's all. Because I told you I'll just add it. Because it is a little bit yeah, three dimensionally explaining is difficult. So but two dimensionally you are convinced. So three dimensions you just have to add. Here the point is, once it's this done, this height you just have to add square. This is a three dimensional how to express this. So this is the way how we express three dimension vector. So that's all. Next, I'm going to this is the all we have done with the addition, subtraction, magnitude, expressing the vector in 2D, 3D. Now I'm going to show you how to do the product of the vectors. So in that case, we will do two types of products. One is dot product, another is cross product. The dot product is nothing but a scalar quantity, whereas cross product is nothing but a vector quantity. That I am going to do it. We have already discussed the addition of the vector, the subtraction of the vector, the unit vector, the how to find the magnitude of the resultant vector, how to find the direction of the magnitude of the resultant vector, parallelogram law, and we have expressed the vector in the three dimensional space also. So now we will do only the thing is left is the product of the vectors. And you know product of the two vectors is given as two types of product is there. Product of two vectors there are two types of one is dot product that is also called the scalar product also scalar product because the output of this product gives a scalar quantity and another product
product is said that is called the cross product. That is actually vector quantity. Or this is why it is called vector product also. So let's do the the products. So first we will do our as usual we will do the easier one that is a dot product. So here it is the dot product. First we are doing the dot product. Or the name is your scalar product. What is suppose you have a vector A? Let's say name it as A19 plus A2J plus A3K. Okay. And another vector B that is your B19 plus B2J plus B3K. Okay. Okay. Now if we do the product of this scalar product, what we will do? This is the way of writing dot which in between. That will be equals to magnitude of vector A into magnitude of vector B into cos theta. Cos theta means the angle between these two vectors is theta. This is the definition of your dot product. Now, I want to do this dot product with these two vectors. Let's see what happens. After doing these two with these two vectors, if I do a dot product, what will get? Let's do it. Vector a dot b manually. This is a formula for a dot product. So let's do a one i plus a two j. Plus a three k dot b one i plus b two j plus b three k. So you will have nine multiplication. Nine multiplication you will get. How much? This into this. This into this. This into this. Let's do it. A one b one into i dot i. I am not writing the cap. Is way time is still cap me cap means you will understand the cap is there on the eyes. Just write i dot i. Then this into this a one b two into i dot j plus a one b three into i dot k plus a two b one into j dot i plus a two b two Into J dot J, into A to B three, J dot K, then A to B one, K dot I, A to B two, K to J, K to J. A to B two to K to J. This into this. Then A C B three K dot K. Now, before doing this multiplication, complete this multiplication. Let me say about what is I dot I is what. Here I will explain you what is I dot I means what. <laughs> I dot I means actually it is magnitude of I. Use this formula. A dot B means magnitude of A into magnitude of B into cos theta. So the I dot I will be what? Magnitude of I, magnitude of I into cos I or I in between the angle between I and I. What can it be? Zero. If the angle between two same vectors, what will be the angle? Zero. You will cos zero. And you know cos zero is one. This is your nothing but one. You know. And magnitude of I because I you know unit vector. Is unit vector's magnitude is what one? So unit vector's magnitude is one. 
So that means you know it is 1 into 1 into 1. That means it is all equals to 1. I dot i equals to 1. Similarly, k dot k will also be equals to 1. Similarly, j dot j also becomes to 1. Next, if I ask you what is i dot j? i dot j will be equal to magnitude of i, magnitude of j into cos 90 degree. Why? Because you know i is along x axis, i is along x axis, and j is along j is along y axis, along this axis. They have an angle 90 degree. And you know this is 1, this is 1, cos 90 is 0. That is i dot dot j is 0. Similarly, j dot i is also same thing, j dot i and i dot, j dot k will be 0 and k dot i or i dot k will also be 0. That is, if you see i dot k, but when there is a, they are not matching, i, when there is a matching, it will be 1. When they are not matching, it will be 0. That means, you see a1, b1, this will become 1. That means a1, b1 will stay. This one will become 0. This one will become 0. This one will become 0. Because you see that i dot k is 0, j dot i is 0. j dot j is 1. That means this part will be your a dot b. Same way, this is 0. This is 0. This is 0. This will be your a3, b3. So you understand manually if you do multiplication dot product of a dot b, what you are getting? a1, b1. A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. I mean, I's with I's, J's with J's, K's with K's. That is the dot product of two vectors. And this is the thing. So, this vector, this dot product is really useful in finding out the angle between the two vectors. What is the use of it? The actually dot product is used to find the angle between two vectors. So that will be very useful. How can you get the angle between the two vectors? You see, this is vector a dot b is equal to magnitude of a, magnitude of b into cos theta. Therefore, the angle cos theta can be written as a dot b divided by magnitude of a, magnitude of b. So, here you write a dot b means what? a1 b1, a2 b2, plus a3 b2. And magnitude of a already you know that the vectors, this, this one vectors magnitude is root over a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square. That I explained you when I taught you the three dimensional vector. How to find the magnitude of a vector three dimensionally. Here, same way, a vector b will be equal to b1 square plus b2 square plus b3 square. So, this is the way how you find the angle between two vectors. Let me tell you another more important factor about this. Now, if the angle, this is how you find the angle between the two vectors. Now, if I say that two Vectors are perpendicular to each other from here. So if that is cos theta is 0. That means cos theta 0 means that means two vectors are perpendicular, condition of perpendicular. Here I write. It's better to write over here. Condition of perpendicular. In that condition of the perpendicular, you know that a dot b goes to magnitude of a magnitude of a to cos theta. And you know cos 90 is 0. So that means a dot b is equal to 0. That means basically you can say a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 is equal to 0. That is the condition of perpendicular data. Just finished. So, what were the things you learned today? Just find out how to find the angle between the two vectors. What is the dot product manually? And what is the definition of dot product? And what is the condition of perpendicular? More things I am going to teach you. 
all the down product. Let's replace it. Just you copy this thing or take a screenshot of it and I'm going to the next step. Vector. 
that vector will be perpendicular to this vector but basically you can call this vector and this vector when you rotate this vector in such a way that it is better to <coughs> say it in this way let us say this is a vector this is vector a and this is vector b so this is my right hand you just cross means use your right hand when a you just curl your finger along this direction along the shortest angle this direction and the thumb will give you the direction of the result of this and this that is the cross product of these two vectors this is the way perpendicular that means when you do a cross product you get a vector which is perpendicular to both the vectors both the vectors that is let us name this as the vector d think it let us name it as vector d so vector d is nothing actually is a cross b that is and this vector is perpendicular to this vector also this vector also that means when i cross product it use your right hand and cross a will be crossed with b when a will be rotated towards b in shortest angle rotated along shortest angle to the b according to your right hand thumb rule and thumb will give you the direction of the thumb will give you the direction of the vector result of a cross b you understand so a cross b's definition is what a cross b's definition is magnitude of a magnitude of b into sin theta and as you know this is a scalar quantity this is not a scalar it's not a vector quantity then as i told you which is a vector which is perpendicular to the a and b then how can you do it with this you just multiply one unit vector this unit vector is in this direction perpendicular to the this is an a vector which is perpendicular to both a and b vector and this much times of a will give you this vector that is a d vector you understand that means a cross b is nothing but magnitude of a magnitude of b into sin theta and that is the direction of that vector this vector and where is the direction which is the direction the direction is perpendicular to the a and perpendicular to the b when I, if i write the vector a and b is on the board then the a vector is perpendicular to the board means it is perpendicular to this board this is the a vector direction and what will be the magnitude of it means the length of the vector the length of the vector will be the this a into b into sin theta now you understand clear so now if i say the vector the vector a is equal to a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 j vector b is equal to b1 i plus b2 j plus b3 j then what will be your a cross b manually just like we did it in a dot b so let's do it a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 j cross b1 i plus b2 j plus b3 k now if you do the nine multiplication of a nine multiplication is there what is that e1 b1 into i cross i e1 b2 into i cross j e1 b3 into i cross k plus a2 b1 a2 b1 j cross i a2 b2 j cross j a2 b3 j cross k and the rest is here a3 b1 into k cross i 
plus a three b two into k cross j plus a three b three into k cross k. Now here also is the question that sir i cross i के पहले का तरफ बने just like before will it be equal to one? Let's look see that. What will happen? What will be the i cross i? Ah, i cross i will be equal to magnitude of according to this definition. Magnitude of i, magnitude of i into sine zero. Because i and i angle is what angle between i and i will be what zero. So it will be zero. Similarly, j cross j is also zero, and similarly k cross k is also zero. So there will be no doubt about it. That is, this will become zero. This where is where is one this j dot j also will become zero j cross j, and k cross k also will become zero. Now what about i cross? J? See i cross j will be equal to magnitude of i magnitude of j. What is the angle between i and j? 90 degree because this is along x-axis. This is along y-axis. It will be sine 90. And what is the what is the perpendicular to i and j? When after x-axis, this is suppose this is your a, this is your x-axis. This is your y-axis and this is your z-axis. See, if you turn x-axis, i is cross means i x-axis is turned on j. But this is i, this is your j direction. It is turned like this. Then thumb will give you the direction. That means thumb is giving you the positive z direction. That means this is your one. This is your one. This is your one into k. Why k? Because you see i cross j. If you do i is cross with j, thumb will give you the direction. Because according to the definition of cross product, you know cross product gives you a vector which is perpendicular to this both these vectors. That means perfect i cross j will give you a vector which is perpendicular to both x axis and y axis. And x axis and y axis with what is which axis is perpendicular to it? That is the k. This is why i cross j will be equal to k. Similarly, if it is j cross i, that means you know obviously it will be minus k. Same way, if you go for i cross k, let's do i cross k. i means this is along x axis, k is along z axis. Now you see that if you little bit imaginative, that means if this thing is rotated like this, when this thing is rotated like this, that means you see when this thing is rotated like this, towards the z, and this is your z, this is your x, that means if it is rotated like this, you see the thumb is going downward. And why is this way? That is why it will be equal to if you go for i cross k. You will get it minus minus j. Same way, i cross k cross i, k cross i will give you positive j. <coughs> Same way, you can go for j cross k. J is which one? This and k is this one. So if it is j cross k, you get it. This way, positive direction. That means if you rotate your hand, j cross k, you will get a positive x axis, i, you will get it. Same way, k cross i, k cross j, you will get negative i. So, for this, let's say, such an easy rule is there also. So, that rule is if you make it in a circle way, that means if this is your i, this is your j. And this is your k. I cross j will give you k. J cross k will give you i. And k cross i will give you j. And if it is opposite, it will be a negative. You understand? 
see this is matching with this, this circle, make, say you can see. Now this way, it will be easier for you to handle. But how it is coming, I explain to you. This is why. So here you see, E1, E1, this will become 0. A2, B2, I cross it. I cross it will be your K. E1, A1, B3, I plus K, I plus K means minus K. Let's make it minus here. That means this is done. <coughs> this is done. Plus A to B1, J cross I. It is I plus J is K. That means J cross I will be equal to minus K. So let's do it in minus k. Then a2 b2 0. Then a3 b3. Hmm, I have made a mistake. I think so. It's not a3 b3. It will be your uh, a2 b3. a2 b3. a2 b3. A to B3, J cross K, J cross K will be your I. Then we have A3 B1. K cross I. K cross I. K cross I is J. And A3 B1 is over A3 B2. Now k cross j, k cross j, k cross j, k cross j, k cross j is minus i. So it will be k cross j will be equal to minus i. That means a3 b2 into i. So you see that six things will be there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now if I segregate all the i's, you will get you will get a2 b3 minus a3 b2. Plus J. If you segregate J, you will get A3 B1 minus A1 B3. Plus K. K, if you get it, you will get A2 B2. Again, let me say this is not A2 B2, this is A1 B2. A1 B2. A1 B2 and A2 B1. So this is the thing we get after doing A cross B. Now you say that this is very rigorous process. But you can do this thing with another easier way. That is called the determinant that I am going to teach you right now. Just keep it in mind, this is our output. So here we are going to do this determinant. This determinant can be done very easily. So I am showing you this place I am erasing it. To show you the determinants. How to do with the other determinant? Determinant is a process of mathematics. In class 12, you will learn this thing. But here you just today for today, you just know how to expand a determinant. Just for today, for this making this thing very easy. See, what is the determinant? Suppose you have three determinants are just like matrix, you have done like determinant is array of numbers, but it has a value. Like a1, a2, a3, b1, b2. B3, C1, C2, C3. If I expand this thing in the determinant way, it will be your A1. And if you take the first one, give a bracket. Let me erase this thing. Otherwise, it will be. <coughs> See? 
Here we write the, these are called the rows basically. These are called the rows. These are called the rows. This is rows. This is rows. Row one. This is row two. These are called columns in the this thing. So how do you expand this thing? You see the first one you take it. Same way you do minus, and then you do the this thing third one. And you see this when you take this a one, this thing and this thing is covered. This thing and this thing is covered. Left is what? This thing is left for it. Just like a tic tac toe, we played. This is way. But if you take a one, the first row and the first column is blocked. The left part you will have it, and that will cross multiply like this. This into this minus this into this. That means it will be b two c three minus b three c two. Same way, if you do the minus a two, second row, second column, a two is the first. This is the second. This this row and this column will be blocked. Left will be this, 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 this. So it will be a two into b one c three minus b three c one plus a three. If it is covered, this and this is covered. Then b one c two minus b two c one. B one c two minus b two c one. But if I take this one, this is covered. This is covered. Then this into this minus this into this. Okay. Now I am utilizing this to find out a cross field. How? See it here. Let's erase this part and write it the same thing below with the help of the vectors. Now when I write in the form of the vectors, what we do? I will write in the first term. I will write i j k. In the second term, I will write a one, a two. A three. In the second, I write B one, B two, B three. Same thing I have to do. First, in the first row place, A one in place of A one, B two, B three, I write I J K. In this row, I write the first vectors components, and in the second row, I write the second vectors components. Now, I will write this I just as I told you this I minus J, and this is your plus K. And when I take this one, so you know that this and this is covered. So let me say a two b three minus a three b two. So a two b three minus a three b two. Same if I take j, this is covered. This is covered. The left is what? This into this minus this into this. A one b three minus a three b one. Same way if I take this, this. The then it will be a one b two minus a two b one. So now you see the vector cross product is found out so easily. That is a cross b can be written as this way i j k the vector a is components vector b component and then expand it with the help of this determinant expansion. So that is it is so much. We are done here to find out this. You can check if this thing and this thing is correct or not. Let's see. I a two b three minus a three b two plus j. Actually, this plus j. This is why this is a three b one again. A one b three bar. Just take take. Here you see a one b three previous this. If I exchange it, it will become automatically plus. That is this thing and this thing is same thing. Plus k a two you see a one b two. Minus a to b one. That's also so. So you see, it's done. So this is the cross product way to remember. This is the trait. This is called determinant. What is the name of it? Determinant. This maths you will do one chapter. You will do in class twelve. In the beginning of the class twelve. So in that. You will do lot of tricks about the determinants, but that much here I will apply. Here I just apply only the simple thing that the starting of the determinant, how to expand the determinant, and using the expansion of the determinant, we have found out a cross b. That's all for the cross product.